get to the next slide. Yeah. Should I move my question to the end? I do have one additional question based on this. Yeah, why don't you hold to the end on this presentation? I may answer it. Um, okay. Deputy issues a fact for written decision within a few days. We'll get to the whole timeline at the very end of this. Um, again, what the written decision is issued, the losing party, whether it's you or your former employer, has 30 days to appeal, and then you go next to the appeals exam. Um, and unless you make a written request for an in-person hearing, your hearing will be by telephone. Um, I almost always do a, uh, an in-person hearing. I've got about three reasons for that. I think claimants come across better in person than over the phone. I think employers come across worse in person than over the phone. And if there are a lot of documents in your case, whether it's a personal manual, a lot of write-ups, letter of termination, things like that. Much easier to deal with that. Everybody's sitting around the same office that's scattered out in three different offices. Now, if you ask for an in-person hearing, that doesn't mean your former employer has to be there in person. They could participate by phone. But I still think it's to your advantage to do that. Unfortunately, the internet appeal system does not give you the option of asking for an in-person hearing unless you fill it into some field that is not appropriate. But, I mean, I would ask for it anyway, if you do file an internet appeal, you might want to follow up with a fax or a letter say, I want in person. Next. Okay, uh, next. Um, so what happens at the appeal examiner hearing is this. Uh, this is a brand new hearing. It's called de novo, brand new. It's as if nothing had happened before the deputy. But that's not exactly true because the documents that were before the deputy, which consists of basically your claim for benefits, the employer's report of separation, the, the deputy's notes of what the employer said at that fact-finding interview, and the deputy's notes of what you, the claimant, said at the fact-finding interview, and then any documents that you or the former employer may have sent to the VEC for the deputy to review, that's going to be, quote, the record. That, the appeals examiner will have all of that. But the appeals examiner is really interested to hear what the witnesses have to say at the hearing. And what exhibits the witnesses present at the hearing. So it's a full-blown hearing. Employer goes first, um, I guess next, yeah, uh, questions the um, uh, former employer and their witnesses, and they're subject to cross-examination, but that's not your opportunity to testify. That's only you and your representative's opportunity to ask questions. And people mess this up all the time. They try to make statements when they're supposed to question. Question starts with who, what, when, where, or why. Not your time to make a statement. After the informed employer is completely finished with their case, then it's the claimant's opportunity to make a statement, to present their testimony. They have an employer, uh, a representative, like myself or any of these people, will ask questions and get the testimony out that way. Uh, the appeal examiner, of course, will ask the questions also subject to cross-examination by the employer. And again, the employers typically mess this up and they start making statements and they don't ask questions, which begin with who, what, when, where, or why. Um, both sides then make a brief closing statement. The former employer goes first. The uh, uh, claimant or the representative goes last. So you get the last word and then there's a written decision in a week or two. Next. Then the losing party has 30, 30 days to appeal to the special examiner. Now, this is very important. There is no new hearing evidence or testimony before the special examiner, unless there's a very good reason. And it's got to be an exceptionally good reason. But the special examiner appeal is really, it's a review. It's a review of everything that took place before the appeals examiner. There's we'll a transcript, which will have everything that was said. They'll have all of the exhibits there, and you argue from that record. So if it's in the record, you can argue from it. If it's not in the record, you can't argue from it. Next, another thing very important, if you want a copy of that transcript and those documents, and if you want to present those written or oral argument to the special examiner, then you have to make a written request for this within 14 days of getting the notice of appeal. The way this works is you, you file your appeal, and then you get what the VEC calls a notice of appeal, more, more properly, it's a notice of acknowledgement of receipt of appeal. We, we've gotten your appeal. Here's your, here's your appeal number. You are uh, something, something, something. Uh, and then you've got 14 days from there to ask for the opportunity to present argument. And if you don't ask for that within 14 days, you won't get to present argument. Instead, the special examiner must pick up the file, review it, 
and issue a decision, but I hear it from anybody. Next, circuit court. You lose in front of the special examiner, again, you've got 30 days to go to circuit court. Up until this point, you've not needed an attorney. You can do this on your own by yourself without an attorney, although I strongly recommend having an attorney, because we know the law and you may not know the law. But for circuit court, you must have an attorney. And, well, I wouldn't even say that. You do have the right to represent yourself in circuit court, but, I mean, as hard as it is to do it in front of the VC, it's even 10 times more difficult to do it in circuit court. So you really, really do need an attorney in circuit court. But, unfortunately, like the special examiner, there's no new hearing evidence or testimony in circuit court. Rather, the circuit court simply reviews the written record that the VC produced and decides whether the decision was correct or not, correct legally or not. Factually, the circuit court cannot and will not change the facts. The facts as found by the Virginia Employment Commission, in the absence of fraud, are conclusive binding on the court. The court will not change it, has no authority to change it. So, next, timeline. How long does all of this take? A long time, especially when you've got no income. Wouldn't you file your claim for benefits and it would be four or five weeks before the deputy will interview you and do that fact-finding? It usually takes only a matter of days for the decision, and then, of course, it's 30 days to appeal. Once you appeal, you're going to probably wait about two months, two and a half months, for an in-person hearing, maybe two months more for a telephonic hearing. But then again, the appeals examiner will issue a decision usually within about 45 days. Then, of course, the 30-day appeal period, and if you appeal, then it may be – actually, we didn't put this on the timeline here, but from the time you appeal until the time the special examiner will do the review, it's usually going to be about two or three months. And then once that happens, it will be another four to five weeks before the special examiner issues a decision, and then finally you've got 30 days to appeal. So from the time you file your claim for benefits until the time the special examiner issues a decision could easily be six to eight months. And then once you're in circuit court, again, those old cases are supposed to, quote, take priority on the docket. If your attorney pushes it hard, it will, otherwise it won't. And it'll take still another maybe a month. Well, from the time you file to the time you argue in front of the judge could probably be a good three months. And then until the time the judge decides, who knows, a month, two, three, usually. Sometimes two. Next slide. Now, what's the final end result of all this? Well, you might get unemployment compensation benefits. Benefits are available for up to 26 weeks. Those are state benefits. There are additional extended or emergency benefits that we'll talk about later. Benefits are between $54 and $378 per week. That depends upon your earnings in a 12-month period called the base period that we'll talk about later. And that ends my portion. Questions, something I didn't cover or something that went over too fast? I'm going to hold my question until the end because it's something that's not really germane to what you thought. Okay. It's related to that. Okay. That's fine. We can talk about it later. Okay. That's great. Okay. We'll get to it. Thank you. 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 Thank